Hello, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to micro teaching on WizIQ. This is your chance to uh, learn to teach online in a virtual classroom and get a certificate for doing so by reflecting on your own and on others peer review. So let's take a look at some of the uh, areas you'll visit. Here is where you'll get a chance to choose a pair and follow the instructions. You're also invited to watch the following blog post. All you need to do is uh, Google micro teaching on WizIQ and you should be able to find it. So let's get started with the class. Class is going to start in about 45 seconds. In the meantime, let me take you through the four sessions in October that you can take before starting micro teaching in November and December. You'll practice by teaching three, but you'll only do one publicly. So uh, here are the classes. One is today's to get started. The second one is micro teaching in pairs, what it means and how to go about it, some tips and tricks. And then teaching in a live virtual class, some of the uh, points you might want to know, and getting feedback from peers. Class is going to start in a second. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to today's micro teaching class. And yes, I'm very excited. My name is Nelly Deutsch, and I'm passionate about learning and teaching because for me, teaching is a way to learn. And micro teaching was my first step into the world of teaching many, many years ago. But I still remember the topic and what it felt like because micro teaching is very, very meaningful, as you will soon find out. So, to get started, if you could just add in the chat box as Tom has started, where you're from, and everything else you'd like to add. If you've got problems with audio or video, you may add that to the chat too. As people come in, and they'll be coming in as we go, feel free to ask them to introduce themselves and tell you and the rest of us where they're from. You're also invited to use the chat box as a way to teach and learn. The chat box is actually a chance to chat during a class, something that you can't do in a face-to-face uh, -face class because it's rude. But here, it's not rude at all. It's encouraged because we all love to chat and share what we learn. So I'll give you a chance to introduce yourselves in the chatterbox. Yes. got thumbs up, thumbs down. We've got faces. Yeah. Feel free to change the font and size and color, which is really a lot of fun. The more you enjoy yourself, the more you will learn. And you'll realize that learning is very, very social. And we all want to uh, learn with other people, whether we admit it or not. So, um, Okay, correct. Yes, come on, folks, chat away. All right, so as you can see, uh, this is part of Moodle MOOC 5, even though uh, the four micro teaching sessions are part of another course that's ending at the end of the year, and we'll be starting a new one in January. So this whole thing is going to start all over with different classes, of course. And um, next year, you'll have a chance to micro teach again, uh, if all goes well, of course. And these are the four classes on micro teaching, which is part of Moodle MOOC 5, and also part of Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology. 
a course that started in 2013, around this time, and uh, is going to end at the end of 2014. So it's been a while. All right, micro teaching. This session is how to get started. Next session is on October 20th, two days from now. And it's teaching in pairs, which is very challenging, but worthwhile. As I said yesterday, you have to pay for the price of learning. Okay, you have to do something. And then teaching in a virtual class. And finally, getting feedback from peers. This is all in the month of October. In November, we start. Okay, of course, there's also a certificate. So let me uh, get started with a uh, poll. Okay, I don't know. Did you get the poll? No poll. No. All right. So let me uh, see what's going on here. Yeah, you did get the poll. In fact, nine people have voted so far. So uh, if you don't see the poll, give me a, a devilish face if you don't see the poll. Okay, so I get an idea of uh, those that didn't. I wonder why. Interesting. Okay, maybe I should start it again. Hmm, lots of people. Only nine, in fact, have. So um, I'll share the results and um, let's try again and see why we're not getting it. Okay, so let's start all over with the poll. Okay, let me start the poll again. And this way, everyone. Uh, including the nine people that voted who have a chance to re-vote. Sometimes we change our minds and these polls don't allow for it. So um, anyone know of a poll that has the editing option? Okay, we've got the nine people again. Ten, we're going up. All right, so feel free to uh, do that if you're having problems. Uh, Billy, Joel, Tanya, Chick, and... If you're still having problems, give me a, let's see, black glasses. How's that? If you're still having problems, you need glasses, <laughs> black ones. All right. Karen. Uh, Rena, about online classes. I have doubt how to do. Oh, you'll be learning about that as part of the uh, micro teaching. Okay, so you'll get a chance to learn how to promote your class. Confuse the micro teaching sessions. Yes, they are. I just mentioned that. I guess you missed it. Um, but yes, the uh, micro teaching is part of Moodle MOOC 5, but it goes on regardless of the fact that Moodle MOOC 5 ends at the end of the month. The actual micro teaching classes will take place November and December. Hopefully, uh, by the end of December, we, everyone that is involved, will have given a ten to twenty minute uh, session with a pair. All right. So let's see. So far, very interesting. I thought this would be interesting. I gave you a lot of choices. So let's take a look at the results of those who voted so far. So what we have right now, I'll share the results with you, even though some people are still voting. So uh, what we have here are, let's see. Well, it's a mix, but the majority are members of Moodle MOOC 5, which is what I expected. And many more are members of both courses. Okay, some are not. All right, so this is good to know as we continue. So I'm going to stop sharing the uh, results and get started with uh, the questions again. If you didn't miss it, the first question was, uh, the question was, are you a member of Moodle MOOC 5? or learn to blend and flip with technology. And uh, these were the options. 
that you were able to choose from. Are there any questions before we... It's fascinating. Micro-teaching, Elaine, it has to be the tops. Uh, and pair teaching has to even top that. As I said at the beginning, I remember my first uh, micro-teaching. If you could just add in the chat box, did you ever give a micro-teaching class? And maybe a little bit about it. By the way, I gave mine on Palm is Tree. I didn't know a thing about it, but I chose a subject and I presented for something like 15 minutes on micro, on palmistry. And I'll never forget the feeling of presenting in front of my peers. It was scary, but it was unbelievable. So I see most of you have not. Uh, Elaine did in-person peer review, but did you actually give a micro teaching session of your own. That's nice, Claudia. Did you do it in pairs or alone? See, there's that double excitement when you do it with someone else. It's not easy, but it's really worthwhile alone. If you want to get the feel of um, collaborating, and that's what we want our students to do after all. We want them to work together. All right, so let's get started and I'll provide you with all the information. This class is actually an introduction. Some know more about it than others. The agenda for this session is first of all, we'll discuss the definition, the purpose of micro teaching and the steps to join. Are you ready? All right, so what in the world is micro teaching? And if you can add some links of good micro teaching websites right now, that would be great if you don't have them uh, at the top of your mouse or finger, you're invited to go and find some really juicy ones. And when I say juicy uh, resources, we talked about resources yesterday on the Moodle. This is what teachers do, but we want our students to do the same. So this is one technique of using the virtual class to get students to show something and to make sure that they're listening, of course. So each one of you, please try and see if you can find a really juicy um, micro teaching website, something that offers you a resource on micro teaching. Elaine, digestion, you may have a bad stomach. I would not try to eat too much. Okay, take it one spoonful at a time. You know, maybe a toothpick would be better than a spoon. <laughs> You're eating a lot. So, you know, chew, as they say in mindfulness, uh, chew very slowly. Okay, take your time, no rush to digest, okay? Right. Uh, Karen, oh, okay, savior. Yes, that's what I tell my children. <laughs> uh, hopefully they'll uh, practice and learn to savor, savor the moment because that's so precious in so many ways. All right, so let's see. We've got one there by Claudia, Claudine, sorry, a YouTube video on micro teaching. Okay, and it's seven minutes by Sage. So we know it's probably academic in nature, which is a good thing. Okay, so thank you, Claudine, for that. Multi teaching plans and feedback. Uh, micro. Okay, micro stands for, everybody knows, it means it's small, minute. Anything else you can say about micro? Yes, it takes, it's a very small portion of something that could be bigger. Ah, uh, did you lose sound? Oops, no sound. Uh, no sound. Um, you can do a few things. You can refresh. Uh, you can pray, um, you can 
try another browser. It depends how long you've had the, uh, the window open. That could make a difference. Oh, here's another one, micro teaching by New Zealand there. I see it's AC, so it's academic. Notice that, and it's a wiki, very good on micro teaching. Make sure that the link works if you got it from somewhere else, because um, there are some really good micro teaching sites from university. Yeah, that's a good one from Victoria. There's also one from the University of Toronto you might wish to find. Uh, the University of Toronto. Notice universities do have a lot of information on their micro teaching and what they're doing. Wow, what is that, Claudine? That's an image. <laughs> but for some reason, you need to copy it. Uh, there's slide share. <laughs> That's okay. No need to be sorry. Uh, it just doesn't look like it has. The ending doesn't seem to have a, an image. Uh, oh, it does have a JPEG, but the JPEG's at the beginning. So maybe it got kind of um, mixed up there. Because I think if you add a link to an image, it will work. But make sure that the ending uh, is the ending of an image and not something else. The trouble is that when we take, we have to know how to and teach our students, of course, how to grab images and the links of images. There's a whole technique on that. Let's see what you've got there. Uh, nope, it doesn't seem to have, it's from Firefox, uh, but it doesn't seem to have the link. I would suggest please block the chats. No, I love the chats, Karen. The chats are awesome. Not in my classes. I, I encourage chatting. In the real classes, I said at the beginning, it's very difficult because you hear all the, you know, the sounds, but here we don't hear anything. It's just reading. But if it's distracting to anyone, you can disable the chat for yourself by pulling it down. You can minimize the chat and then you won't see anything. You can also minimize the attendee list and get rid of my face for that matter if you want to minimize that and just get my voice. Okay, so feel free to do that. You've got lots of options in the live class. So nobody has to do it for you. You can actually do it for yourself. All right, so micro teaching is teacher training. It's a technique, okay? It's a technique and it's both for inexperienced and experienced teachers. So you don't have to be a teacher to uh, micro teach. Actually, all of us are teachers. We may not be, thank you, Hassan. We may not know that we're teachers. We may not get money, get paid as teachers, but actually everyone shares information and that makes us a kind of, teachers. Um, Karen, please feel free to get rid of the chat. You don't want it there. It's, it's distracting for many people. That's true. And it's also a chance to practice teaching in small groups. And this means that uh, you can teach in groups of, uh, in pairs, groups of three, four, but small groups together, which makes it more difficult. And the idea is to learn from one another as you watch. So it's not really uh, judging, it's learning. And not criticizing, of course, because it's about learning. You don't want to put anybody down. According to the University of Toronto, and this I got from the University of Toronto, if you want to get this information, uh, let me share the, uh, the PowerPoint presentation with you. So you can click on the clickable, and most of my images are clickable. Okay, so there's the link to uh, the PowerPoint presentation that I'm showing. We are currently on slide number five. In fact, if you leave the class and only listen, you'll be able to follow the slides outside the virtual classroom. So you won't get any of the distractions and you won't have to manipulate the chat or anything else. It allows teachers to focus on teaching skills. Now that's a very important term, teaching skills. And it's something that we should think about. What are these 
teaching skills in a confidential, non-threatening environment. And that's really important because we don't want to feel that someone is going to criticize us. Nobody likes to be criticized. I don't care what you say. And anyone who says that they love to have people throw darts at them, I don't believe you. I don't think there's anybody who would think about it a little bit that likes to be criticized and bullied and ridiculed. I don't think so. But in any case, most of us do not like to be criticized. We want to be encouraged. We want to be supported. We want to hear good things. And that helps us grow. And everything else doesn't. So the feedback that you get is from your peers. It's from the instructor. It's from strangers. It's from so many areas. So there are multiple perspectives when you get the feedback because everybody sees something else. Everyone sees something else. And Elaine says that teaching skills depends on how it's delivered. Thank you. So support is truly important. And what better place to get support than from your peers who understand and know that it's difficult to be evaluated by others. All right, and why in the world would you want to do this? What would be the purpose of micro-teaching? I've just mentioned some of them. That's true, Elaine. It does depend, but I still say that any kind of criticism, even when it's sugar-coated and looks really tasty, does not taste very good or very well, and is not digested very well either, to use those terms. We like compliments. Let's face it. So the only way to uh, criticize someone and make them feel good is to smile and keep the criticism and the negativity to yourself, because otherwise it hurts. And we know it. We know it from our students because today we get lots of um, feedback uh, that the administration is interested and it's not always fair and it doesn't help. And people get fired for the wrong reasons because a student got bad grades or whatever reason. So um, it's always nice to hear good things. So why in the world do we want to micro teach? Any ideas? Lie through your teeth. Yes, you can do that. That's right, Anne. It should be fun. Everything should be fun. Why not? Can't we learn when it's fun? Can't we learn when we hear good things? Can't we learn when someone smiles at us and tells us that we did something wrong that they didn't like, but that we're wonderful anyways? Well, the reason is that it's social, and many of you have mentioned this. Micro-teaching is a social activity, and everybody likes uh, to be with other people for entertainment, for fun. It's collaborative because it's learning together, and you get support. And when I say support, it's positive, always positive, and it's fun. That's why... And how? How are we going to do it? How are we going to? Well, Brian, I think, Brian, you have to be one of the unique persons in this world who provides, who always provides teachers on WizIQ with positive feedback. And it feels so good. I mean, we know when we make mistakes. We don't need someone to tell us that we goofed off. So it's always nice to get that compliment. So how are we going to do it? Let's go through the steps. Well, the first thing we need to do is partner with a teacher. Again, a teacher could be anyone that is interested in sharing information and getting the experience of micro-teaching with someone else. So that could be anybody. 
All right, so partner with a teacher could be anyone. Number two, choose a subject. Now, if you had to choose a subject, by the way, how many of you have a teacher already? If you could just write down the name of the teacher that you have already partnered with. Yes, and these are the steps that you will take to micro teach. If you're interested um, in more, learning more about micro teaching, you may find this of interest. Let me add this blog post. Great, Billy. How do you partner with a teacher? Well, any suggestions for Anne? Anne has a great question there. Thank you, Anne. How do you partner with a teacher? Ah, there! That's how you do it. Thank you, Griffith. That's so sweet. I love that. That's why the chat box is so important. Okay, in the classroom, you would probably be embarrassed or you couldn't talk, so you'd have to keep it to yourself or wait till the end of the class, a physical face-to-face -face class. There, you got it. Okay, so the next question is, how are you going to connect? Okay, so you might want to uh, grab that person um, and figure out where you're going to meet to continue this. Maybe someone has suggestions where they could meet up. Any suggestions, those of you who have pairs, where can they team up? Google Drive. <laughs> Any other suggestions? Any links out there? Skype, Twitter. Yeah, you might want to share your Twitter there. Uh, Billy, uh, is it Billy? No, Billy has Maria, uh, Griffith, and Anne. Okay, you might want to do that. As a start, you can also do it on WizIQ in the course feed. Okay, course feed is a chat area in the courses. All right. So first you partner with a teacher, then you choose a subject. Uh, has anyone chosen a subject? Notice my subject was on palmistry, and the reason I chose it, um, in those days, they didn't have the internet, I must confess. Uh, so I think I went through books in the library and I, and I saw this drawing of a palmistry and I, I liked the colors and everything. So that's how I chose it. The same way I would choose a topic today. I would go to Google. I would go to write some things, look at images and decide. So what topics have you chosen? Soft skills, training. You could choose anything, but the point is you have to come to a consensus with the teacher you're going to teach with, with your pair. All right, so uh, that might take a bit of um, work. Okay, feel free to use the chat to get a partner there. And then you prepare a 10 to 20 minute presentation. Now I have to sh uh, show you, that's the final, uh, but this is the process. Okay, I've just taken you somewhere else, and the process is, let me change the color here because I've got a different pointer. My pointer is green. Okay. You find a partner, as I said, to co-teach with. You start a Google Drive doc and share the doc with each other. We'll get to that in a minute. You decide on a topic and dates. Uh, you get permission to fill in this form. You start preparing a PowerPoint presentation. You upload the PPP, PPT to your account on WizIQ and you share the link in the Google Drive. Now all this happens right here, but you need to ask for permission. Okay, did anybody add that yet? Okay, so there it is. It's, it's not open to the public, so you'll have to ask for permission. And anyone who is there and knows you can give you permission. All right, so these are the steps. Some have done three, but they're going to choose one. So you might want to practice until you get one that you like. Okay, but you're only going to do one 
micro teaching session? That's a good question about languages there. Uh, whether to do it in English or other languages. We've got Spanish speakers, so I don't think Spanish would be a problem, but this is something we might uh, want to uh, decide if you want to do it in English or in another language, if there are enough people to be able to um, understand it. I suggest English for now. Okay, You can practice in other languages. Any questions up to now? I don't hablo espanol, but I know Tom does. And um, there are a few people, English language teachers, who um, live in a non-English speaking country and speak other languages. So, so far, are there any questions from slide number nine? So I'll put nine and see if there are any questions so we can continue. Yes, you can get the slides. Um, let me get them back here. You can get the slides somewhere. I've added the link. Here it is again. Okay, you can get the slides and follow the slides that I'm using right here. And everything is there. You don't have to remember or take notes or anything. Just enjoy. Uh, the information is there. You can ask questions. We'll repeat. Okay, the next steps are... Schedule a live class on WizIQ together. And for this, you'll also need to co-provide each other with the co-presenter link. And you can find out more about this in the following link. And of course, you can um, get the chat box at the end. Practice teaching for 10 to 20 minutes so that you don't go over the 20 minutes. Okay, so practice teaching. You may um, practice as much as you wish. You may schedule as many classes as you wish. The more practice, the better. So why not? But you have to be a teacher. You have to have a teacher account. If you need, uh, WizIQ has given everyone um, free. Everyone who's doing the uh, micro teaching will get a free premium account so that they can have the uh, co presenter links. Okay, so micro, all those who are doing micro teaching will get uh, free premium accounts so that they can use the co presenter links and other features of the premium accounts. Okay, so in order to get the free premium accounts, you'll need to email me. But first of all, I want to see you working. Okay, so uh, prove to me that you're doing something. Okay, otherwise you lose your premium account within a month. Okay, so if you want to keep your premium account for longer, you have to be using it. That's the idea. The idea is to use it. Okay, so you decide on a day and time to teach as a pair. You upload the PowerPoint presentation on WizIQ. Did I jump here? No. Okay. Any questions up to here? <laughs> okay. I love it when people chat because they're really not paying attention, which is fine. Um, because you can't do two things at the same time. So Corinne is right. You make the presentation public. All right. Very good, Elaine. But you can do both. Uh, you make it public. Make sure that it's public so that you can share the presentation link in the course feed. The question is, which course feed? Right? So what course feed am I talking about? I am referring to, let me share the link in the chat box. I'm referring to the course Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology, which, as I said, started in 2013 and is going to end in 2014 at the end of the year. So here is the link to the course in case uh, no one has added it. It says Blogging Reflective Learning, but it's actually Learn to Flip. MMT, you mean MM5. No, not on MM5. Okay, because MM5 is going to end at the end of October. Well, officially. But 
Learn to Blend and Flip with Technology is going to end at the end of December. And then we'll have a new one coming up with another name in January. So you share the presentation link that you made public. Make sure that it's public so that I can upload it. Okay, and then you share the presentation with me through my email. Now, my email is really easy. My name is Nellie Deutsch, and my email is Nellie Deutsch, okay, at gmail.com. So it's quite easy to remember. Tom and Jerry Roadshow. Yeah, it sounds like it, doesn't it? Okay, now we know the generation there, Elaine. I don't think uh, many kids would remember that. All right, then you schedule, I think I'll schedule a live, <laughs> you do, online class. Schedule a live online class for yourself. So you can practice. Uh, you share the PowerPoint with me by email. Let me just, I think I did that twice there. Now you check the calendar of events. I created a calendar of events, especially for the micro teaching. Okay, so let me share that with you. Uh, the calendar of events is somewhere here. There it is. Just uh, click on it and let me know if it works because you never know with uh, Google. Okay, oh, time's going so fast today. Right. Okay, so there it is. There's the link. Please try it and see if it works. Um, if you're if you have editing rights, um, Tom, I think you should be able to also add people. I'm going to make sure that you do that. Everybody who has editing rights will be able to add other people. Okay, I'll just fix that in a second. It's it says invalid. That's what I was um, worried about. Yeah, I I felt that that's what it's going to say, which is why. I decided to have you check it. Let me um, try to get it again uh, and share the uh, the calendar with you. Uh, let's see if uh, it allows me to do it uh, in a better way. I can actually, it allows me to um, share only the um, embed, which is kind of crazy. Uh, let's see, let's see if I can calendar address. Let me try again and see if it works uh, this time. Yeah, I think it should work now. Let me know if it doesn't. Okay, there it is again. Please, oh, did I lose you? Uh, please try it again. There it is. Okay, try that one. Tell me if it works. Google doesn't always uh, make things easy. See if that calendar, it worked. There. Okay, so that's the right one. Okay, that's the link. Wonderful. Okay, so that's the calendar for the micro teaching. So check the calendar of events I'm going to be adding to make sure the date for your session is available. Okay, this is going to be a little bit tricky, but we can do it. And then notice there'll be one session per day. So we're talking November. Uh, it could be every day November. Error. Really? It works for Tanya, but Anne gets an error? Is that right? Anne, do you get an error? If it works for one, it works. It should work for everybody. And so you know, keep trying, copy it and add it to your uh, browser. If not, email me and I'll see if I can help. So one session per day, November and December, those are the months. And uh, you'll also have peer review after each session. So be ready for the peer review. You're going to get certificates uh, for this, but you need to reflect on your own, um, on the process and on the actual outcome. Okay, on your own micro teaching and on peers. Okay, those that you have viewed. Uh, you need to share the date of your session with me. 
so I can add it to the calendar and then you continue practicing. And that's it. I think I made it. Um, are there any questions? Oh, I love that music. In teaching, in English teaching, nice. No Facebook. Okay, if you have any questions, do not ask them privately on Facebook because nobody else can get the answers. And I believe in collaborative learning, as I said, uh, Wajbi. Okay, so please share your questions in the course feed or on Moodle. Okay, so that's where you share uh, your questions, comments, and so on. If you want to pair up, that's the place to pair to in the course feed. The calendar is empty, that's right. Because nobody has given me a date yet. You may start sending me dates once you go through the whole process. You're invited to send me the date and I'll add the date. Make sure that you also have the time in um, and a link to the time zone so I can uh, see what time. Uh, the calendar will be in many time zones. But for me, it's going to be EST, Toronto time. For somebody else, it'll be another time. But in any case, uh, I need to have the link to the time zone. Yes. All right, so when you're ready, let me know that you're ready with it. Okay, give me the go. And I'll add it to the calendar. Actually, I think you can also add it to the calendar, but maybe I'm wrong. I think you can also add it to the calendar. I think it would be better if you add it to the calendar. So you can add it to the calendar. Okay, I can add you to the calendar so you can add yourself. No, you don't need to change it to anything. You just need to share, add it, and then it'll be fine. Are there any questions? You're confused, chick. Uh, I have the PowerPoint prepared. What to do now? I submitted it for approval on this site. Who are you working with, Chick? I'll give you the rights, Tom. I'll add you. You can ask to be added, can't you? You're not working with anyone, Chick? So what is the PowerPoint for? Is it for the reflection of one of the sessions? If it is, you need to share a link of your blog post. Yes, I know Brian. I haven't seen Helena. Uh, maybe she's on vacation. I was just thinking about that the other day. Okay, so Waji, you're with Claudine. Excellent. All right. So thank you, everybody. You can continue the conversation in the course feed. Let me give you the... Uh, and you can ask questions. Here is the, uh, the link to the course. And all you need to do is go into the course feed. If you would like me to put you on the calendar, send me a message and I'll add you to the calendar. Okay, so copy the chat. Are you ready? Uh, copy the chat before I... Um... Oh, I think I have another session. We have another session coming, so we better leave this one. Okay, so... Um... There's another session coming up. Uh, let me on MM5. Okay, the session is going to start in about 15 minutes. Uh, let me share that. The session is with Dr. Anitha. Okay, it's going to be wonderful. As always, Anitha is a wonderful speaker. I could listen to her forever. There we go. Okay, so there's the link to the next session. The topic, let me check. Uh, the topic is digital literacy and higher education. Anitha is a professor of English as a foreign language. All right, so thank you everyone. Copy the chat. And we'll see you in about 15 minutes. Of course, this was recorded. 
without your names or the um, chat box and will be added to YouTube and Vimeo.